Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. Hope you all are doing well. Behind door number one today, or open yard, we got this nice crusty Troy Built Bronco. I picked this up this last weekend for cheap. And uh, let's see, the story behind this one was the mother bought this lawnmower, used it for a year or two, and then she was moving out of the area, so she gave it to her to her kids who is who I bought this from they said they used it for a summer and then they could not get it to start in the following spring he seemed to think that um, they had some bad neighbors at the time and thought they had tampered with the mower because uh, there was kind of some uh, issues between the neighbors but we're gonna get into this thing and see what's going on just a quick overview before we get this over to the shop uh, the guy was definitely into this thing, um, the, the guy that I bought it from, he unbolted like some of the front, took out some of the bolts for the hood, so the whole hood I've got to get remounted back up properly. Uh, I don't even know if I have the bolts for the engine shroud, he gave me a bag of hardware, I'm hoping that they're in there. Maybe so, we'll see, yeah it looks like it. But there's like two solenoids. One doesn't even look like it goes to a lawnmower. And some bolts. But uh, so far, he said he couldn't get it to do anything. But uh, engine definitely has compression. It's not locked up. Um, let's see. I did check it the other day. There was the oil was actually right up to the full mark and didn't look too bad. Um, pretty sure the battery's dead in this thing. It's been sitting for, uh, since last year. I don't know what year this battery is. Uh, that is a June of 2021 battery. 42 inch cut. This is a pedal drive. There is no cruise control or anything like that. Just your standard MTD Bronco. Nothing... Nothing crazy going on. Hopefully the deck's not seized up. But, yeah. So, let's get this thing over the shop and hook the jumper pack to it and see what's going on. Alright, the old jump ski's hooked up here. We've got uh, about 12 and a half volts. So. Let's see. Neutral, PTO is off, parking brake is set. Alright, well, here we go. Damn keychains in the way. Got a whole lot of nothing going on here. Just listen to that solenoid. not getting a click or anything. I guess let's just check this solenoid and see where we're at. Let's pull this battery up. Oh my lord. Alright. Let's just see if this battery even has 12 volts. I need to go find my meter. We do have 12 volts at this battery, or at least enough to light that up. So... We'll hook this to the ground side. And I'll take you guys in here. Oh, that's nice. So they've already been in here. The solenoid's not even connected anymore. Let me get this uh, battery holder out of the way. So I don't know if you guys can see or not, but it's not even mounted anymore, but I'll just kind of check everything. So we've got positive coming out of the battery. We've got positive here at the solenoid. And then we should have... Let's see, we'll just check. We'll hit the key switch here. Check the other side. Alright, I'm turning the key. We're getting nothing. 
let's check these other because i think that i think the green one is our ground and i think the orange is our signal one way or the other we're supposed to get voltage to the uh to the signal wire which still get nothing here man all right let's try this other one i'm hoping you guys can see this is that yeah i'm getting nothing here all right well let's check voltage at the key switch yeah we're getting nothing here I'll show you guys which ones i'm talking about so we should oops we should be getting power at least to to this terminal or this terminal but we're getting nothing here and i know that we've got a uh, good connection because the light's coming on so let's see I guess let's trace the hot lead that's coming off from the solenoid that's supposed to feed the switch to see what we got going on all right so I know some of you guys are gonna be like man you jumped the gun and you didn't even look at the fuse which you're absolutely right, so let's check that now, because that should have been my first thing to check. So on the fuses, let's see, make sure we still got good voltage, and you guys can see. All right, so, yeah, fuse, you've got <clears throat> normally these two little spots on the top for testing purposes. So, we are good there. And sometimes with these fuses too, the um, the terminals will actually kind of, I've had this happen where the terminal will back out. So you're showing that you've got a good fuse, but there's nothing coming out power side. And we're good here. So let me show y'all. Had to close the door. I think that helped. I'm hope, hoping you guys can see. And I've got my headlamp on now, so we've got, uh, let's see, so we've got positive going into the fuse block. It's basically just in case you get um, some kind of a short in your battery. And then there's this red and white one, which should be our power going to the key switch. See if we can find that one here. So that one's red and white. And there's the other red and white. So that was one of the ones we checked earlier. So interesting. Alright. Um I guess let's check the harness here. All right, I'm having a hard time getting the tripod down that low, but I've got, uh, I poked into the wire with my lead, and we are getting power up to this point. All right, well, I did test probe uh, the harness up to this point, and I was able to get power. I'll show you guys what I found, because I spent a few minutes just kind of digging around. It's hard to see anything, but... Um, you know, sometimes there's like open open ends on some of the harnesses that I've dealt with before, whether it's like an accessory that's not on it or something like that. Uh, but this should be the power wire hooking up to it. And tucked behind over here on the harness was the other half. And so I'll show you guys if I can get the test light in there. So we've got... You, know, you guys can see it if I can get it stuck in there good enough. There we go. So we've got to just hook up these two ends. I just didn't see that there was any loose wires uh, that had come loose in here. So we should be able to just hook that up. Let's see. Oh my. Well, we're definitely getting voltage to the starter now. Oh my gosh, that sounds terrible. The guy had the shroud and everything pulled off from here. 
All right, so we've got power finally. Let me just set this off to the side. Put this back in. Take a look what's going on with the starter. Pretty sure that battery's weak anyway, so. Looks like our Bendix is stuck from setting. You guys can see the rust on this bad boy. I'll probably end up at least sanding on the might take the coil off, clean up those contacts, and clean up the magnets here on the flywheel. Let me get some uh, penetrating spray on this and see if I can get the uh, Bendix freed up on the starter. Making progress, finally. All right, well I got the Bendix freed up on here. I did bump the key a few times, and uh, it was slipping a little bit because of the spray I put on there, but I seem to have it now where it's get engaging the flywheel, so. Try this again. Right. Sounds like it's got good compression and everything too, so. Um, yeah, finally we're making some good progress. Got that electrical issue solved. And frozen starter. I guess. Let's go ahead and take off the air box and hit it with a little carb spray. All right, let's hit it. Choke. Here we go. Is that running on its own gas for a minute? Let's try it by itself. Now that starter's slipping again. can't still be running off that carb spray. Maybe. Maybe we can get it, hit it a few times to get it to start pulling some fuel. Smell that old gas. Oh yeah, it stank. Sweet. All right. Well. Oh yeah, I forgot. This thing's like barely even on there, so it might not even be pulling enough uh, suction to the carburetor bowl. I'm gonna see if I can find another nut for this too. But I would rather just pull the carb off and start at least getting it clean. That way we know. I'll uh, get the ultrasonic cleaner turned on. All right, got the carb off from there and I was fighting this solenoid. I finally just got it cracked free so we can take a look. This thing was on there though. I could about busted my knuckles getting it, getting it out. Oh man, if you guys could smell this gas and here's burning my eyes. Try not to tear this gasket. Uh, come on. Which side do you want to come off? Oh man, there's all kinds of snot rockets up in here. I think I have another gasket for this anyways but it's on there this thing is crusty good lord oh yeah a jet jets just totally packed you guys can see all this like green grimy it actually feels like sand in there it's really gritty Let me get this thing in the ultrasonic cleaner. I'll show you guys what I've been doing too. I've basically just been taking uh, this 
uh, Pyrex that I got and then just putting uh, some gas in it and then just using the ultrasonic cleaner like that because the the gasoline works as a really good cleaner too and I don't have to clean out my ultrasonic cleaner as much I don't have to refill it every single time so I'll put some fuel in here I'll put this in and we'll run it through a few cycles start to get this thing cleaned up all right I put this through a few cycles and this thing was just super super crusty but I did uh, check the fuel solenoid on here uh, while that was in the ultrasonic cleaner I hooked it up turned the key and it is retracting uh, like it's supposed to uh, I had to take a brass brush to clean up the needle best I could bowl is nice and clean those little spots you see at the bottom that's actually just pitting in the metal itself and then the inside cleaned up real nice got the jet cleaned up everything should be pretty good uh, also that o-ring that was on here it I was able to get it back in place uh, but I did take a q-tip with some marine grease and went around it too so it'll help it seal so I'm gonna go ahead and get this reassembled we'll get it back on there and then I'm gonna go ahead and check this fuel uh, I'm gonna cycle some of it through into a cup take a look at it and see if it's contaminated or not and then uh, we'll kind of just go from there if I need to I'll empty it put some fresh gas in there that way we've got a good fresh excuse me fresh start and hopefully this thing will be up and running all right well I had to charge up the camera <clears throat> in the meantime I buttoned up a few things I did put the top cover back on there was only two of the bolts that came with it and I got the uh, side plate for the hood mount mounted back up it was these three half inchers and there was two bolts that go on the hood that's outside to, I guess that are like the hinge that go into the slot here uh, what else did we get so I got the carburetor back on hooked up the fuel line well immediately it just started pouring gas out of the carburetor uh, so the seat was just not quite sitting I gave it a couple of taps and it's been sitting since or seating since so we'll keep an eye on everything uh, I did test out the fuel earlier it was actually really clean besides being a little yellowed out so we're just gonna try to run it shops an absolute mess right now you guys can see I mean I have like two feet on each side of these tractors I think we're gonna try to do something over the winter time where we end up putting double doors on that side and that way I can pull mowers in and I'll have like six to eight feet to the right because normally I'm working on the side and this side is really tight so another future project but yeah you guys heard enough about that y'all want to see this thing crank up so let's give it a whirl it's going to be on that old gas and uh probably a smoke show so as soon as i crank this thing up we'll go ahead and pull it outside and see how it runs all right come on baby <laughs>
not running half bad we're sitting so long old gas in it i may just add a bit of fresh gas in there and just kind of mix the two together i mean it you know still smelled like gas it wasn't too too far gone uh, but it definitely probably is a little bit lacking on uh, octane so but i think now that we've got this thing at least up and running and moving well, i'll go ahead and hit this thing with the pressure washer that way we can get a better eye on everything that's going on with it and uh, we can move forward but yeah so far we went from electrical issues stuck starter carburetor to uh seeing what else is going on with this we'll have to obviously check the deck and make sure that's all good let me get the air box back on here to pressure wash and i'll throw the hood back on here but let me get this cleaned up and we'll move forward all right well i got gave this thing a decent bath it needs a lot more cleaning but so far looking looking pretty darn good i did add a little bit more fresh gas to this and some fuel treatment and also i started working on the seat here i did pull out uh, it had like some, I don't know, even roofing screws or something like that uh, that was just stuck through these holes. Um, but I'll show you guys what had happened. See, what had happened was, now these, uh, I don't even know what you call them, I guess little plastic mounts, they had both pushed in. This one I just got out, and I was going to show you all how I got it out. I had to find a bolt that was the same thread that would go in here and then kind of fish them around till I could get them lined up. And then I just took a pair of pliers here and I pulled up until it clicked into place. It's got like these little locking tabs on either side. So I'm going to get this one pulled up and what they do is it has these little grooves on the side and they go you put the seat into this spot right here and then once it's down in that groove it'll slide in that rail and then you can just put in uh, the actual locking nut to put it in the position but I have no idea why they decided to go that route with the screws so I checked the spindles and the idlers everything feels pretty good on here I was checking the um, height of the deck Take this thing out for a spin I'm tired of working on it got it uh four inches on both sides and i also just took off the steering wheel and straightened that up too because it's driving me nuts um yeah we got the seat mounted up right now hopefully the starter's not slipping too bad
right well this is the next day i did finish cleaning this and had a few other things i had to do that were a little unexpected but give you guys a good look over this tractor headlights came out super nice on this all the plastics cleaned up you guys can see the uh the shine on here wheels the only thing that didn't clean up very well is the the chute on here i did try heat neat heating it a little bit to see if it would get rid of that fade and it did not i don't really like painting these unless i have to so i'm not really sure what i'm going to do yet uh, i did clean up the deck a little bit more gone ahead and sharpened the blades on here let's see yeah those are sharpened and balanced i think the only thing left i got to do is i still need to do an oil change on it now the issue that i had yesterday after filming was it was still kind of running a little bit rough and i went back through i cleaned the carburetor again and i was still having issues with it couldn't figure out what was going on with it i did end up pulling the valve cover off and checked the valves they were within spec so i ended up not adjusting those but then i had to reseal the valve cover with some uh, black rtv and had to let that cure overnight uh, what ended up being the issue was another carburetor so the original one on here i just could not get it clean enough i ended up putting a walbro on here off another uh, kohler courage that i had and that seemed to fix the problem i also in the meantime put a brand new spark plug in here drained out all that old gas so we have uh, and i blew out the lines so we have fresh fuel uh, new clean carburetor and sitting pretty good so i'll let you guys hear it the battery was good on it uh, no tears in the seat i mean this thing is this thing is in really really good shape so give it a crank for y'all if i can reach this key <laughs> works on here all the safeties work everything is good to go so what do you guys think it's cleaned up really nice i think this sh should be a good machine i may end up doing some touch-up paint on the governor bracket just because that's about the only thing on here that has a little bit of rust um so yeah we'll uh we'll do a little cutting with this just to double check uh deck is leveled out i mean this thing is is solid the only thing i said like i said is i need to do an oil change and maybe just uh grease the steering in the front but other than that we should be good to go so let me get y'all on the tripod we'll do a little cutting and we'll wrap this up This turned out awesome so super pumped on this one we had the uh, electrical issue with this the issue with the starter um, all kinds of carburetor issues uh, there was a little bit of water in that gas too that I drained out so we had fuel issues that were going on with it um, other than that I mean it was just going through and tidying everything up sharpening the blades and uh, should be good to go so what do you guys think? What 
What do you think this one would be worth in your area? Love hearing from you guys. I've been getting tons of comments lately and a lot of support, so I really appreciate it. And uh, we have a lot more projects, obviously, if you guys saw my last video going over all the mowers we got here at the house. So thank you guys, as always, for checking it out and uh, look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. So on that note, let freedom ring, let those small engines sing. I'll see you all next time.